The device you're looking at here is called a rotometer. It's measuring the flow rate of air in this case. Actually, they make them for use with virtually any gas or liquid. The way a rotometer works, it's a small tube or channel cut into a block, either plastic or glass, and that tube has a cone shape. It starts small at the bottom and grows wider at the top. There's a small plummet inside that tube that's lifted up by the flow of fluid through it. Right now, that plummet in this example is a small uh, BB-sized ball of metal. And as I open up this valve, you can see that rises up. Because the tube grows wider as it goes to the top, more fluid leaks by, and it takes a greater flow rate to lift that plummet to a higher level. So right now I'm about the 50% mark. Right here, 60%. Right here, 80%, all the way up to 100. And this happens to be standard cubic feet of air. Uh, that's right there, eight standard cubic feet uh, per hour of air. That's five standard cubic feet per hour of air, etc. This particular installation we're using the flow meter for is metering airflow into a bubble tube to measure the level of oil inside of a reservoir. There's our oil reservoir right here. It's lubricating oil for our turbo compressor system. And we have a bubble tube going into it that's bubbling air through it. We use the back pressure in that bubble tube to monitor the height or level of oil in the reservoir. And that pressure is monitored by this photohelic gauge. But part of this system, a central part of any bubble tube system, is some sort of flow indicator to let you know when you do have a purge gas flowing into the bubble tube. So here, the rotometer serves that purpose. And you can see here, if you look closely at the photohelic gauge, you can see the needle bounce back and forth. That's because of the individual bubbles exiting the end of the bubble tube. So I could look at the bouncing rate of that as a crude indication of flow rate. However, we do have the rotometer here that serves as a secondary indication uh, or primary if you rely on this more, and that's its purpose in this application. So that's what a rotometer does, that's what it's used for, and that's how it works.